Hello and welcome to Morningstar. I'm Emma Wall and joining me today to give his three stock picks is Ed Leggett, manager of the Artemis UK Select Fund. Hello, Ed. Hi. So what's the first stock you'd like to highlight today? First stock is our largest holding in the fund, which is Prudential. Um, Prudential is a life assurance company with significant operations in Asia, the US and the UK. We like Prudential as we see it amongst the large companies in the UK, so the top 20 companies in the UK is the one actually with by far the best growth prospects. So if you look at their track record, they're doubling the size of the business, primarily driven by Asia and to a lesser extent the US, you know, every six, seven years organically. And at the same time, the returns they generate from uh, both those businesses are high enough to fund the growth of the businesses as well as provide dividends to shareholders. And I suppose that global remit is the thing which keeps it being enticing. Because I remember a couple of years ago with pension freedoms, annuities being scrapped. People were very worried about the future of life assurance. But you're yep. saying actually the pro will do OK. We think the pro will do you know, well. Increasingly, in, the onus is on individuals to sort out their savings for the future and, 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 and pension and uh, healthcare provision as the state steps back across the world and as companies step back across the world. And companies in that sector that have distribution, have scale, can manufacture the products efficiently, we think will be winners and prove certainly fits in that box. And what's the second stock? Second stock is um, IAG, International Airlines Group, which owns Iberia, Aer Lingus and British Airways, amongst other airlines in Europe. Uh, clearly, people have different, differing views about the, the product itself and, and what they're doing strategically. But for us, the most interesting thing about IAG is actually, you know, London airports are full and it's their positioning at both Heathrow and to a lesser extent Gatwick that provides them, we think, with you know, a material barrier to entry in an airlines industry which historically has suffered from capital coming in and overcapacity. And how do you grow as a company like that? Because obviously, well... There is some there are some conversation about there being an extra runway in London, but you know you're not going to get a new huge hub in a central city, are you? You're not, no. And so that's I mean the great thing about is having an airline that can't grow for us is attractive. So it gives them pricing power. It's a capital intensive business. I.e., I've got to you know spend all the money to buy the planes and then make a return on that. Um, and for us, the you know the interesting thing about. Uh, IAG is actually the cash flows off that company. It's valued on a very low rating because people look back at the past and say, well, the airlines historically have been a difficult place to make money. They're very volatile earning streams through time. But we see today the cash flows from IAG today, you know, enough to basically give us the whole value of the company back on a six to seven year view. And we'd still own the company at the end of it. And so that for us is attractive, and the reason it's attractive is, as I say, is that capacity constraint in the London airports. And what's the third and final stock? The third and final stock is probably a stock that most of your uh, listeners haven't heard of, which is a company called David S. Smith. It's a company we've owned for a long time. It's the second largest cardboard box manufacturer in Europe. And for us, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's two aspects to the story. One is cardboard is actually being used increasingly more. And if you, you, know, if you think about e-retail, Amazon, how much cardboard you're getting through your house every day is going up. You know, exponentially in my case through time uh, as my family uh, and young kids will start buying uh, more and more products online but it, over time uh, that's driving a volume story and at the same time it has been a very fragmented market which is consolidating so there's a there's top line growth coming from FMCG and uh, online retail and then there's consolidation which is driving returns as those very large players in that industry require a pan-european solution Ed, thank you very much. Thank you. This is Emma Wall for Morningstar. Thank you for watching.